hey waffle gang i do hope you're well my name is mark and today we're checking out some more reddit stories and if you do love a reddit story why not consider and i like subscribe maybe that notification bell too let's crack on with today's first story which comes from the am i the asshole subreddit from school spirits fan and says am i the asshole for asking my wife to ask her friend to leave my wife has a friend we can call her berta Berta likes to show up unannounced, often in an emergency and late at night. My wife has been friends with Berta for years through rougher circumstances. I send my wife wake me up and herself in the middle of the night to go pick up Berta from the airport. We've offered Berta a place to stay on our couch in the past. The problem is Berta never really asks, nor does my wife. I show up, she is already there, and my wife asks if it's okay she uses our bathroom to get ready for work or doesn't ask if it's okay if Berta even stayed the night. Berta has stayed a few nights now. Each day waits until evening and I say something and my wife says that the day is included in asking to stay for the night. Then another night passes. I come home today after a stressful day and expect to get some privacy. I go to my bedroom and Berta is sleeping in my bed with my wife talking about their day. I passive aggressively text my wife that I had to take a massive stinking crap and I hope Berta doesn't mind hearing or smelling it. Both got upset. I feel like my boundaries and consent is being violated. I'm tired. I just want to be home at peace. I just want to be gross in peace. I want quiet again in my house so I can grade. I want to watch my shows in peace. My wife thinks I'm being cruel that I have too many rules and like she can't have friends. Only today she let me know Berta is houseless and has nowhere to go. So I guess she is staying longer. My wife says since it's her house too, I can't say what happens with her guests. Money is tight for us as is. I support us on my own income and Berta uses a lot of electricity while I'm at work and eats our food. I'm upset my wife didn't tell me this before I said yes. I want my wife to have friends I really do, but this friend overstayed her welcome. Am I the asshole for asking my wife to make this friend leave? So there were some relevant comments. Someone says, have you spoken to your wife or, you know, just been passive aggressive? Opie says, I have. Last time Berta overstayed her welcome, I sat down with my wife and let her know how I felt. I expressed that Berta overstayed her welcome. She agreed to me letting her know next time when I'm ready for Berta's leave. I let her know last night Berta should leave. I came home in the evening and Berta is still here. Someone says, you know, you're not the arsehole, but that was a childish response. And Opie says, you're right. I responded childishly. I don't know what came over me. I was so upset because I let my wife know I was uncomfortable. And when I came home, the friend is still here. And this time laying in my bed on my side. At this point, I'm just desperate to get this person to leave. Someone says, does Berta or your wife work? Do you have children? Opie says, one, Berta doesn't work, nor does my wife. Two, no, and right now, I don't think our relationship is in a good place for kids. Someone says, they're both living off your money. Opie says, I really don't want to feel that way, but I think that might be how I frame it to my wife. But I consented to supporting her financially, not her friend. Someone said, is it possible your wife is sleeping with her? Opie says, should I be worried about my wife sleeping with this woman? I'm also concerned at how much my sleep, my privacy and my work comes after Berta. Regardless of sex, I'm trying to figure out why Berta comes first before me. Someone says, yeah, sleeping in the marital bed is weird. Could your wife be having an affair with her? Someone says, that's weird, right? My wife isn't the first woman I've dated, nor is she the first bi woman I've dated and that's never happened before even with queer women I've dated especially not them sleeping on my side of the bed without asking I feel like I might have caught something I wasn't supposed to I'm trying not to be paranoid someone says wait your wife is bi is Berta someone says yes I don't really want this to become shaming bisexual women though but yes and that's why them laying in the bed together I'm they're just friends but also who does that Someone says, when you walked in, were they cuddling? Did they seem surprised to see you? Opie says, they were cuddling and stopped. Berta faced towards her and I couldn't see. Maybe I didn't really want to see, I don't know. 
And then one final thought from OP before the update, which says, it really doesn't seem like I'm in a throuple. I didn't realize I was signing up for. I was really weirded out by the whole situation about him coming home and finding her in the bed as well. They were cuddling. Uh, I know there's friendships and stuff, but it definitely does feel weird to me. And I wouldn't be happy with that at all. She sounds like she's made herself way too comfortable in your house if there isn't something further going on. Can you imagine that from like Berta's point of view? How she doesn't feel that strange at all that she's climbing into someone else's bed without the guy knowing about it. How did that scenario even come up? Oh, let's go and snuggle in bed and have a chat or, or whatever. It feels too weird. When I was younger, I remember my mum had a friend. Not quite the same level of weirdness as this, but the friend who seemed to always come round when there was something going on in her life and would just turn up. And it got so weird that she would just start letting herself in our house. I can remember sitting there. I think I might have told this one before. I can remember sitting there watching TV. My mum was in her chair, my dad in his, and I'm just sort of sat like on the below my dad's chair, leaning against his legs. And this woman comes in and she just Walks herself down on the sofa like barefoot. So she must have walked down the street. I mean, she was only like four or five doors down from us. But she walks in. My mum's watching her usual EastEnders or Coronation Street, whatever soaps on TV at the time. She sort of like brings her feet up to her chest like in a ball while she sat on the sofa and then starts picking her toenails. It was grim. I can remember just thinking, what the fuck's going on? I was quite young at the time. And I think my mum felt real bad for her because she had a rough life. And, you know, she was recently divorced. She had four kids she was taking care of. I mentioned one of the kids, you know, who the, the guy who tried using this barrel down the river and the barrel rolled over and he fell out, etc. Real hard life. But when she was turned up doing that sort of shit in my house, I was like, oh, grim. But he who is person says not the arsehole. Your wife is being insanely entitled and rude to you. It's both your houses. Marriage is supposed to be a partnership, not a dictatorship. Guests need to be agreed upon by both. But you need to start using your words and setting boundaries. And you also need to ask yourself whether you really want to spend the rest of your life with someone with so little respect for you. Abby Dorable says not the arsehole is your house too, and your wife isn't considering your boundaries or your peace. Why is Berta taking priority over you? Why is it your wife's responsibility to pick up the pieces of a friend every time? And why doesn't she even consult you when making big decisions like this? It's not healthy for either of you or your marriage. That said, you need to openly communicate with your wife and explain your healthy boundaries and not be passive aggressive. If she can't respect your healthy and reasonable boundaries, maybe she should stay with her parents for a while and take Berta with her. And one final commenter from I am Irene who says, holy invasion of privacy, dude. Lines being crossed everywhere, but that takes the cake. And it was quoting the bedroom bit. You're not the arsehole, but could quickly become one if you don't lay down your boundaries with your wife and her friend. You do deserve peace and privacy in your own home. Berta needs to go. Your wife may think you are cruel for demanding that your boundaries be respected, but I bet she wouldn't appreciate finding you and one of your friends asleep in her bed when she gets home from the store. So, OP did update the post and says, I attempted to talk to my wife about it, but she didn't want to talk about it with the friend around. Her and Berta continued last night watching TV loudly in the living room while I was working. Finally, I got up and took the car and left. I just needed to get out. I went for a drive and let my wife know why I was leaving and Bertha left. When I got home, my wife and I talked for three hours. I talked to family and friends and they agreed with me. My wife reassured me there's no romantic or sexual things, but she feels guilty for the friend because my wife was in a similar situation in the past. The situation reads as a very codependent to me and I try to explain to my wife the best I could that this codependency is impacting me and our marriage. And it's okay she wants to support her friend but that she needs boundaries, parameters and I need to feel like I can say no. And that if she wants to continue her friendship with Bertha she will be doing it somewhere other than my house. I made it clear I don't like her. I don't like how my wife treats me around her. And if she wants to continue she needs to do it elsewhere. And as for the tension around me paying for everything, I let her know that it would make me less stressed if she did find a job. But if she can't understand wanting to come home and unwind, then maybe she needs to see how hard work is. Because I need the empathy as a bare minimum from a partner. A lack of caring about my comfort or privacy is what concerns me, especially given our financial situation. She seemed to understand. 
we work through it, and I'm looking into couples therapy for the both of us, so we have the language and tools to work through it. Opie then explains what happened to Berta and says her boyfriend was kicking her out and they got into an argument. I wasn't aware of that. My wife wanted her to come to our place instead of a shelter. But my thing is, Berta is like this. I'm 30, my wife is 32, and Berta is 31. It's been 10 years of having extenuating circumstances, as my wife calls them. Next time she comes to the house, we need to connect her with services, but this is a close friend to my wife, like a sister. And I think there's a lot of guilt with connecting her to those services. I sound cruel, but Berta goes through a lot of breakups. I'm kind of tired, her relationship instability being our problem. Then, more on the wife having a job and them not having kids. Opie says my wife is looking and starts one again soon in a few weeks. She has worked in the past. We discussed her staying at home as we try for kids, because her income is less than what daycare costs in our area. But she had a miscarriage. I think returning has some emotional weight for her. Sorry if this is too much information. I don't want to villainize my wife. And there was a mix of opinions after this one. A lot of people saying that good communication is going to fix things, setting up boundaries. Other people suspecting that things are just going to fall back into the same pattern that they have before. And other people bringing up the arts room. <laughs> if you know, you know. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Meet Meet B from the Relationship Advice subreddit does have an update and says, my ex's new girlfriend is telling me that I am causing problems in their relationship. So first off, I feel like this is absolutely insane and I'm unsure what to do. When I, female 30, was 16, I met my first real boyfriend, Vince, male 31. He was 17 at the time. We were together for a year and then broke up. While me and Vince definitely aren't friends, we are still friendly. The extent of our interaction is a yearly happy birthday and happy new year message, along with some small talk on that occasion. We follow each other on Instagram and sometimes like each other's pics. This is it. Nothing more. Anyway, when I was at a New Year's Eve party a few days ago, I got a message from Vince saying, Hey, happy new year. I wish you all the best. To which I replied, happy 2024. Hope it treats you well. Fast forward to this morning, I got a message on Instagram from a girl I don't know, and this is what it said. Hey OP, I'm not sure you know me, but I'm Vince's girlfriend. We've been together for a while now, and we are very serious about each other. I see that you message him and like his pics. I would appreciate you stop that. We are going to get married, and this sort of interactions are not appropriate anymore. I hope you understand that inserting yourself in our relationship causes turmoil and I cannot handle the stress and anxiety of it anymore. So I'm kindly asking you to stop. I was floored. I actually just started laughing, but I also got angry. She's misrepresenting things in her message. I checked out her profile. She's 23. I was a bit surprised by the age gap, but whatever floats their boat, I guess. She has plenty of pics of them together, so it's legit. She's his girlfriend. Now, I'm not sure what to do here. I feel like this girl is imagining things. She's claiming me liking some of Vince's pics and wishing him happy birthday is causing turmoil in their relationship. She says I'm inserting myself into their relationship. Me and Vince are not close at all. I didn't even know he is in a relationship. I showed this to my fiance and best friend. My fiance advised I block them both and don't get involved in this drama, which is definitely something I'm not opposed to. But my best friend told me I should maybe just send a screenshot of this to Vince. Because maybe he knows about it, so it won't be a big surprise to him. But if he doesn't, maybe he'd want to know his girlfriend is reaching out to his ex with some strange demands. So, I don't know what to do here. I'm absolutely not going to reply to her, but should I let Vince know she messaged me or just let it be? Now, I kind of agree with both of those options that you could either tell her. The only one I wouldn't do is actually get involved with her directly. I kind of agree with letting him know because maybe she's doing this to other relationships that maybe she's, you know, stalking his social media and, and contacting a lot of people and sort of isolating him from his potential friends, if you like. If she's doing this to you, who only messages a couple of times a year, maybe the closer people who he talks to more frequently, she's messaging them behind his back as well. 
But then again, they might tell Vince about it. But at the same time, I totally would understand just taking a complete step away from this and not one get involved in that drama. But Flow Mojo Blow says definitely do not engage with her. Take a screenshot and send it to Vince. Just keep it neutral along the lines of, hey, just wanted to share with you what she sent me. I apologize if any interaction has been misconstrued as my inserting myself into your relationship. Best regards, OP. Then let him handle. If he blocks you, so be it. If he doesn't block you, so be it. Grandpa Wheezy says, I agree with this fully. I had an ex take my phone when I was asleep once and message every one of my guy friends with a similar stay away warning message. It was a huge red flag that I'm very glad I caught. Frequent team says, what the fuck? been more than 10 years lol what's that girl doing why is she worried about an ex of 10 years does she have something else to occupy her mind with she's clearly emotionally immature she should talk to his boyfriend not to you hope he says 13 it's been 13 years that's why i was so shocked at first i thought it must be some kind of joke we absolutely are not close no quotes needed i don't think i have a clingy attitude at all sorry unless wishing someone Happy New Year and occasionally liking a picture of their dog is clingy, so be it though. How am I trying to sabotage their relationship? I literally didn't know Vince was in a relationship until this morning. As I stated in my post, I haven't replied to her. How is this sabotage? Really? The OP does come back in to update the post and says, So I sat on this for a day or so, considering what I should do. There have been many comments pointing out how strange, insane and bad it is I stayed in contact with an ex. Saying I must still have a thing for him. I honestly resent the implication. I see Vince much like a childhood friend. But some people were dead set on me being stuck on him. Which is not necessarily bad. It just made me see lots of people see it this way. His girlfriend might as well. So I decided to remove myself from the situation completely. I don't want to be a bad guy and a homewrecker in anyone's story. I blocked her on Instagram and blocked Vince as well. I also blocked Vince on Facebook, and I thought that was it. A week passed, and I get another message from this girl, this time on Facebook. I didn't block her there because I didn't even know her full name. This message was more hostile, now accusing me of not removing Vince from my LinkedIn connectors as well. And she felt that's how I'm still trying to keep track of him. I almost never use LinkedIn, and I completely forgot I even had him on there. I've never spoken to anyone on LinkedIn other than a recruiter. I don't know. This made my anxiety go through the roof. I blocked her on Facebook and removed Vince from my LinkedIn connections. And this is it for now. I just want this to be over and I want her to leave me alone. I hope she doesn't also check his MySpace account. Slash sarcasm. A commenter immediately after that says, at this point, I'd tell Vince. Becky replies that saying, yeah, after the LinkedIn message, I'd absolutely tell him all of it. This is unhinged. Hope he says, look, people literally call me unhinged saying keeping in contact with vince is basically inviting drama in my life at this point i just want to be left alone the last message actually kind of scared me i don't want to be anywhere near that eleanor says need to tell vince this isn't your problem to fix show him all the messages and tell him you want to cut contact because dealing with his girlfriend is not your responsibility what if this girl shows up at your house next or your job she sounds unhinged enough to pull that kind of shit Obi says that is exactly what worries me. In her last message when she mentioned LinkedIn, she also implies she now knows where I work and where I can be reached. And the comments after this one were split. Some people saying absolutely tell Vince about it. Other people saying, you know, I wouldn't be touching that shit either. But I would be considering at least letting your work know about the situation. If she seems to be escalating a behavior, I'd let them, let them know just to be wary of any weird emails that come into the workplace just in case she's that vindictive and i do wonder myself what happens when vince tries to message op and, and will he realize that he's blocked i'm not quite sure how it works i've never actually blocked anyone like that i think i know on x or twitter you can see that you've been blocked by that person but i'm not sure about other social medias and and texting and all this sort of stuff because at that point surely he's going to be like what the fuck why did she block me? Which again could ignite and escalate the situation further. And I suspect that 
again, that Opie isn't the only person that she's doing this to. If she's looking on social media and going through all these various other social medias, she's checking out a few people, I'd imagine. I don't know. What do you guys make of this situation? Put yourself in Opie's shoes. Would you be telling Vince about this or would you be like, nah, I'm not getting involved in that drama? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being involved. Truly, it's absolutely amazing. And don't forget at the very end of the video, there'll be a couple of playlists there that you can click on and it will automatically scroll through all the videos for you. So whatever you're up to, and don't forget to let me know over on at Mark Narrations on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. And show me what hobbies, what you're up to whilst you're listening. Always love to see it. And we'll continue to scroll through all those videos for you. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.